video, I'm going to be replacing this shower curtain, which I hate, with the uh, sliding glass door. It's a shower tub combination. So um, let's go uh, look at what I bought, open up the box, and see what we're working with. All right, so I picked up the shower door by Sterling. Got it at Lowe's. I believe it was around $250. So you can see it's just the, uh, there's a picture here, a dual sliding door. It sits on top of the tub. So uh, let's crack this open. Here's the part number for you uh, if you like this one and you want to try to find it uh, yourself. 647999. That is the Lowe's uh, SKU number. Uh, the manufacturer's part number is going to be this number right here. 542759SG03. It's a pretty simple kit. You've got uh, your metal trim pieces that are going to be installed along the, uh, the edge of the tub, up each wall, and then uh, across the top of the tub. Uh, and the doors will hang from that top bar and they'll slide back and forth. Um, it fits a variety of opening sizes. I think this one's like around 54 to 59 inches uh, width. So you'll have to uh, cut some of these metal pieces to fit the width of your tub opening. All right, let's take a look at some of the tools we need. Pretty basic stuff. Most people are gonna have most of this stuff already. Um, so at the end of the video, I'll let you know what I didn't use and what other tools I needed, because uh, sometimes the instructions fall a little bit short of reality. Um, but before you start, you really want to make sure you've got a level. This thing really has to be level up and down as well as across the top because the doors hang from the top rail and they've got to fit smoothly into the side on each edge. Um, you're going to have to have a hacksaw. Uh, this file just to smooth out the uh, edges. If you have a tile uh, shower or tile you have to drill through for the sides. Uh, you will need a uh, masonry bit. This is a, uh, says you need a 5 16 so it's actually a quarter inch, so I'm a 16th off. Um, so I'm just see if I can make this work, kind of open up the hole a little bit with the end of this. A um, couple other drill bits you'll need, pliers, uh, metal snips, um, of course your drill for the drill bits. So, uh, We'll just go from there. Um, so these are the four pieces. You've got one piece that goes across the bottom uh, along the along the tub, and then the two pieces for the side um, where the doors will meet, and then of course the larger piece back here um, that covers uh, where the doors are hanging. All right, it's the first piece. Just the one that's shaped like this on the end. The track you're shooting for is right here at the top, this top slot here. You'll see the, uh, the shape of this is going to fit right in there, like so. But you don't want to put this end in first. You want to go up to where that notch is, which is right here, and fit it in like that. So you'll feel that it's really hard to push in, but if you go up here and pull on this side, it should pull right in. You kind of pull this out a little bit. This is kind of lined up, and you should be able to pull it. Let me lay this down here. You want to pull this right in. Um, and that's it. Just pull it all the way down. You have to. It looks like I'm pushing here, but I'm really just kind of guiding it. Um, you don't want it to bind up too much. You see how it's peeling off uh, a little bit of that, that plastic. So just 
kind of guide this so it stays kind of in the center of uh, where you're trying to go, but I'm doing most of the pulling uh, with this other end. Alright, now that it's almost all the way through, it's kind of easy to push from this, this end. But you have to go the other end now. And you'll see it's sticking out here. So, and where uh, this is now uh, hanging off the end, you can just cut this right off. And uh, step two has us uh, measuring the uh, bottom of the tub or where the bottom rail is going to be on top of the tub. So let's go do that now. Okay, before I do anything else in here, I got to get rid of this shower curtain. Alright, so all we need to do here is measure from one end of the tub the wall, all the way down to the other end to the wall, which is going to be 57 and 5 eighths. 57 and 5 eighths. Alright, so now we're going to take this piece that we just put the black strip in. We're going to measure the uh, 57 and 5 eighths, and then we're going to subtract a quarter inch and make a mark. So it'll be 57 and 3 eighths. Now we're just going to cut it off. So if you have a bandsaw, it would be easier to get a nice straight, clean cut. Um, I do not have one, so I will be using the hacksaw for this. So I'll just throw this in the miter box and uh, chop that off. As you can see, that cut turned out nice and clean. I can still feel uh, kind of a sharp edge on it. So I'm just gonna run the metal file over it just like maybe once or twice just to take off the edge. Alright, next step is to uh, put this in place on the tub. I'm going to take this uh, up with me along with uh, some uh, masking tape to hold it in place and then a pencil to mark the edges of it. Alright, so we're going to lay that metal strip on the top of the tub here on the outside edge. It's going to be turned just like this with this tall part facing the outside and this on the bottom of the tub. So it'll look just like Um, so you need to center it end to end so you have the same amount of space at each end. You don't want one end up tight and the other end far away. Um, so to kind of get that center between both ends. And then you also want to center it on the top edge of the tub. So you kind of have the same amount of flat surface on both sides of the metal rail here. Alright, once that's done. And just take your masking tape and get a nice big piece, put it right across the top to hold it in place. Just do one on each end. And you just want to take a pencil mark right on the tub itself, like along this back side, so if it moves, you'll know exactly where it was. Okay, now we're going to do the wall jams. Um, so the wall jams are pretty much the same, um, you know, front and back. There's definitely a top and bottom. The top 
um, this metal part comes all the way to the, the top edge and at the bottom where it meets the uh, the base piece the this metal part is up and it's got a slot right in there you can see so that's going to fit over this front ledge this bottom track It'll go just like that Um, so, if you've got a, a curved, like plastic uh, tub wall here, and it's got a curve, you will need to trim. Take this. Up. You need to trim this corner to match the curvature, both corners, match the curvature of where your wall meets the tub. Uh, since I've got a tile that just meets the tub flat there, um, I'm just going to take off just a little bit where this uh, caulk is. Um, I'm just going to barely, barely hit this corner and round it off a tiny bit. And that should be plenty for both sides. So we round off those corners and we'll go to the next step. Alright, so I've rounded off uh, one of the corners. Uh, you can see right here, this one's a little more round. I don't know if there's enough light there to see that or not. And that one's a sharp corner. And that's going to go against the wall on this side. So you just want to put this on there. Slide it down into place. And then, if you're going to need your level, you just want to make sure this is plumb straight up and down uh, and we're going to tape it into place there we go so we've got that taped into place we we'll put one more piece just in case so it has to move any but the bottom pretty much bottom track holds it in place but if the bottom track moves um, this may help hold this piece in place. All right, so here's what we should have so far. We cut the bottom track, tape it into place, then just put in the side pieces. Those are taped into place as well. Make sure they're level, up and down. <coughs> So the next step is to mark these holes. There's three holes, one at the top, one in the middle, one down here at the bottom. We want to mark all three of those and drill the holes through the tile. This is where we'll use the uh, masonry bit. All right, so I didn't have anything small enough to put in there to mark the uh, tile, like a pencil or a pen or whatever. So. I just use a tiny uh, little drill bit here and just uh, use that, put it in the hole just enough to etch the tile a little bit and then uh, I'm going to pull this uh, wall piece off. I just colored it with a pencil where I etched the tile so I could see it. So that's it right there. Alright, so I've got all my holes drilled now and the Masonry bit I had was actually a quarter inch, but I did have to get a five sixteenths. Um, and then clean up the mess, you don't have to pull out the bottom track there. And uh, yeah, of course you have to pull it off to put silicone on it anyway. So yeah, go take the bottom track off, get all that cleaned up. And then the next step is to uh, install the wall anchors. The parts they give you in this uh, in the package, they're all in the order of the steps. So you're basically going to start at this end with the wall anchors. And they look like this. You just fold them in in the middle, like that. And then you put them in the wall. And then when you put the screw in, it opens it up. So we'll put these in. And then we'll uh, go to the next step. Alright, so I've got all the uh, anchors in, the walls. Next step is to prep the uh, 
base cap again, uh, the bottom piece that goes on the tub. So what we're going to do now is take our silicone, we're going to put on this one bottom edge here where there's like a little flat surface for the bead of silicone to go. That's the only place we're going to put silicone. Um, so this is the outside part of the tub. You don't want to do any silicone in he on here, maybe after you get it installed or on the bottom here. Um, because any water that gets inside here through the end, you want to be able to drain out to the tub and not drain out to the outside of the tub. Um, so that's why you only do silicone on one side. So just flip this over. Run a, a nice big bead of silicone from one end to the other, thick enough so that when you put it down, it's going to close the gap here and make this a uh, complete seal. And I'm just using this uh, GE. 100% silicone. So once we get that done, we're just going to set this straight down in position lining it up with the uh, marks we made on the tub earlier and then we're going to tape it back into place exactly where it was before all right this piece is in place i'm just going to put my side pieces back on Try not to move this bottom piece when you're doing that. All right, now we're ready to put the screws in. So when you do these screws, there's a uh, bumper that the glass doors will, uh, will hit as you open and close them. So the top and bottom screw We'll have this bumper and it'll be turned sideways. So each door will hit either over here or over here. You don't want to do it like this, that won't work. Just put it sideways and just put in, uh, put in that one at the top. You'll put in a screw by itself up here in the middle. And then we'll do a screw with another bumper down here at the bottom. All right, so this is in, bumper at the top, screw in the middle, bumper at the bottom. Uh, got the other side done now. So the next step, Give you these little screw covers. I'm sure these are not 100% stainless steel screws. Um, certainly they wouldn't do this just for aesthetics. So it's probably just to prevent rust or prevent seeing rust. So those little screw covers go on there like that. And then our next step is gonna be to measure from the wall here to the wall here. So uh, we'll grab a tape measure, measure that, and we'll cut the next piece. Okay, my measurement across the top of the tub there, uh, from wall to wall, was 57 and 5 eighths. So this is our, our top piece, and um, we're just going to mark it 57 and 5 eighths and cut there. Uh, they say to cut it just a hair short, maybe like a 30 seconds of an inch, 30 second of an inch. Um, because you want this to be as tight as possible, but not too tight to where you can't get it in the wall. And if it's just a 30 second thaw, it's going to be hard to go back and take more off without using like a, a sander or some type of tool to just shave it down some. So you want to just keep it just under uh, your measurement. And um, 
it is reversible. So you can have it so this rounded side is facing out into the bathroom, or you can have it so the flat side is facing out into the bathroom. So I'm gonna opt for the round side. So when I'm cutting it with the hacksaw, I'm gonna have this side up. I'm gonna start at this corner and then come come back this way with my saw. Um, that's it. I'm gonna do my measurement and start cutting. If you know anybody with a bandsaw, that would make this much easier. But uh, this cut, I'm just going to smooth out these edges with the file like I did the other piece. And this will be ready for installation. Okay, I'll see if this fits. success so you can see there's only just a very minimal space there on the end and that's exactly what you want all right so now we're ready for the doors so next we're going to use these gaskets Basically just a little plastic piece here in these brackets. Like this. So of course the gasket goes in the over the uh, or inside the bracket. So what we're gonna do is put the gasket on first, on the glass door. You see at the top of the door there's two holes. The bottom of the door has the metal trim on it. So the gasket you can see inside has two little sleeves that kind of go inside the hole there. So we're gonna open that up, push that down until it gets on the in, into the hole. And we'll put the brackets right on top of that. And it doesn't matter which way. This is turned where the holes are going up at this angle or you have it flipped around the other way and the holes are going up this way. But it's the same. This is this uh, stem is in the middle. Uh, you can have this turn uh, like this or like this. And then the next uh, step is in the bag of hardware. You'll see a screw and then a, a sleeve that the screw goes into. See one, this goes into the other. So both of these are flathead, so you need two flat blade screwdrivers to um, turn these, hold one and turn the other. Alright, so you'll want to start this by hand. I don't know if you can see, but they put a uh, some thread locker on here. So you're not going to be able to turn it very far by hand, but just kind of get it started and then you'll be able to use the screwdrivers on it.
I just want to get it nice and snug. It doesn't need to be super tight. All right, so once you have this done for both doors, again, this will just be tight enough to where uh, you, you'll be able to move it some, like side to side. But if you try to move it front to back, it'll be pretty, uh, pretty solid. It doesn't have a tiny bit of movement, but that's fine. Um, so the next step is to put the rollers on here, but to know which side to put the roller on, we'll have to determine where these doors are going exactly. So the inside door that's going to be closest to the inside of the shower is going to be on the side where your shower hardware is. Um, so the inside door will be against here, the outside door will be uh, on the outside on this end of the shower. So it'll just be just opposite if, uh, if you have your shower configured the opposite of this where your hardware is on this end. So when you look at the doors, you'll see there's a frosted side has a texture on it. The other side is just a smooth, smooth glass. So the frosted side goes on the outside of the shower. This is the outside of this door, and I've got this one turned over. This is the outside of this door. Where your holes are for the handle, you'll see there's a hole there, and obviously there's not one on this side. It just has a small, small knob. Um, it goes on here, a round one. So the inside door is going to have the hole for the handle towards the shower hardware with this frosted side out. So this is the side I'm going to do first, the inside door. And this is going to be closest to the hardware. The outside door, the hole will be on the opposite side of the door. Still a frosted side out. All right, now let's look at our rollers. It's just in the next next section of the hardware packet. Let's open it with one hand. So the rollers, they're all the same. And they just have a uh, screw that fits into here. Um, so the screw will go through the metal bracket and you want to make sure your rollers turn the right way so the nylon roller isn't against the metal bracket but the gold uh, spacer here is against the metal bracket. So let's go do that. Okay, so this is the frosted side. It's towards the, uh, the shower hardware on this end. So the inside door the roller is going to go on this side. So we're just going to put this screw through the middle hole here in the bracket. And this will go on there. And you will just tighten this down. And it's got a little lock washer built on to the screw there. So just snug this down and it should be good. I'll have to get my screwdriver. And just the, the way to know that it goes on this side, you know, the, um, the top rail is where this hangs. So the inside door hang on that side. The outside door of the roller will go on the opposite side um, with the bracket here. Uh, so this is good. I'll do the other four and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so I've got all of the rollers on there outside door. The rollers are on the same side as the uh, frosted side here. So the next step is to hang these into place. So you're going to do the inside door first towards the hardware.
Okay, so this door is in place. hanging on the inside track. Sorry, I don't have good light in there. So I'm gonna hang the outside door on the, uh, the outside track, on, on the, uh, the outside lip under here. The bottom at this point is still free swinging. You can push it in. When you put in your uh, outside door, you may need to push this in some just to uh, get the outside door in. Because you've got to put it over, over this lip. Okay, we'll grab that. So just go, make sure you get it. Uh, beyond that bottom lip down there at the bottom and maybe push the inside door in a little bit let it drop down get your rollers underneath the rail here and then up on the inside and just hook, hook it over the lip inside there a little roller track and there we go so now both doors roll Quite feasible. Again, the frosted side is out on both doors. The inside door, the hole is at the end where the hardware is. The outside door, the hole is at the opposite end. Okay, the uh, next step. And the last piece of hardware that's in the plastic bag is the little center guide that goes on the bottom rail, and that's what keeps the doors from swinging in and out. So we're going to mount this in this position. Here, I'll move the camera down so you can see it. All right, so now that both doors are hanging, you want to make sure these slide end to end and they don't touch this bottom rail, they don't get, <clears throat> don't get caught on anything. And then, uh, so our next step, we're gonna put on the, uh, the center uh, guide. So you wanna measure from both ends, and I guess from end to end, on this bottom rail and find the center. It's 57 and 5 eighths. will be right here and then just mark that on the rail I think I did that math right in my head I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape on here and measure from both ends that's 28 and 3 quarters This side. Oh, 20 and three quarters. All right. So that's going to be where I want the center of this piece. I'm going to move this camera just a bit. So this piece is going to go. And this rail just like this. You'll see one door it's going to go in here, the other door will go in here. Let's slide these down. So you can slide this right. The doors like that. And move. You can kind of look down here and see where your piece is. Make sure the middle of that is in line with your mark. And now, we just want to hold this piece tight 
from the inside, slide both doors from one end to the other to make sure they don't bind up on that plastic piece. So the next thing we need to do is screw that piece into place. Alright, so this comes with two self-tapping screws and you'll want to use uh, your drill with a Phillips bit on it. So you jump inside the tub and it screws right into the, uh, the bottom track, bottom rail. Sure, centered with your mark. All right, so that part's done. Next step, I'm going to uh, install the knobs on the doors. Okay, so the knobs come just like this. You just screw together through the uh, hole in the door. So each knob will have a plastic piece. Like that. So the, um, the thin part of the knob, you see the different thicknesses, the thin part goes in between the doors. So basically this, the bigger part, go on the inside, is where, which is where you would grab it to open and close the door. Same thing on the, the outside door. The big part will go on the outside, which is because that's where you would grab the outside door to open and close it. Easy. We'll just do the same thing to the other door. Okay, when you have the other door knob installed, really you're at the final couple of steps. One of which is removing all these stickers and they should peel off pretty easily. And then very final step is using your silicone sealant on the outside of the door, outside of the assembly. You want to seal all three uh, edges on the side, the bottom, all the way across the bottom, and then up the other side. So those three uh, corners you'll want to seal on the inside. You only want to do the side, uh, the end pieces. You do not want to seal on the inside of the bottom track because any water that gets in through here or anywhere else, you want to be able to drain out, um, drain out underneath from underneath this track. So side rails, you'll seal on the inside and the outside, bottom rail, outside only, and the other side rail, inside and outside. And we'll do that and then uh, we'll be done. All right, that's it. This project is complete. I uh, will go over the uh, the tools I used real quick, but before I leave the bathroom here, I wanted to ask you to subscribe. I have a few more projects planned. Um, well, number one, I want to replace this toilet. It's, I believe it's old as the house, which would be about 32 years old. And uh, we'll be doing this flooring eventually. And then I've got another bathroom I'll be doing a lot of work in. Um, but let's look at the tools I used because I did have a couple of things I needed that weren't on the 
uh, list that the manufacturer provided. So uh, let's go look at that. Okay, so I used everything the instructions said I was going to need, uh, except for a couple of couple of things. Um, I did need two flat blade screwdrivers, which uh, that wasn't mentioned in, in the instructions, as well as a Phillips head bit for the uh, drill for the self-tapping screws. Just make sure you have those. They said I needed some uh, pliers and some some metal snips, but I did not need those. Um, but depending on your installation, that could be something you need. Um, yeah, everything else I pretty much used. Couldn't really have done without. You definitely need the 5 16 masonry bits. If you don't have one of those, get that before you start. If you have a tile shower. Um, and also get the full tube of silicone. Don't get the small, uh, little small tube. Because um, you're going to need that. And yeah, that's it. And it wasn't listed in the uh, things that were needed, but you definitely want to wear safety glasses, especially when drilling that tile and then also cutting the uh, aluminum. Uh, you definitely don't want to uh, get any of that debris in your eyes. That's it. Um, like I said, I got a few more projects coming up, so please subscribe. Leave any comments or questions below and I will try to answer as quick as possible. Thanks.